Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel June 2022 exam. This question is about functions and they've given us these two functions f and g and they've told us f of x is defined by 5 minus x over 3x plus 2 and g of x by 2x minus 7 f of x has a domain of all real numbers except for x equals negative two thirds which is what causes the denominator to become zero so it causes it to be undefined so basically all real numbers there's no restriction except for the value that causes it to be undefined and g of x is defined for all real values of x there's nothing which will cause this to be undefined so therefore this is there's no restriction in the domains here it says find the value of f g 5 okay so basically for us to find f g 5 we need to do one of two things okay either one or the other the probably the easiest way of dealing with this is to find what g 5 is means substitute 5 inside the function g and whatever value you get for that you you substitute into the function f which is probably the easiest way so basically if you find what g5 is and substitute that into function f you'll get your answer so this is like f and instead of x in function g i'll replace it with 5 so it'll be 2 times 5 minus 7 okay that's going to give you 10 minus 7 which is 3 so you're going to find f of 3 and f of 3 is when you replace the x with 3 in this function. So you end up with 5 minus 3 over 3 times 3 plus 2, which gives you 2 over, that's 9 plus 2, 11. 2 over 11. And there's the answer to part A. Okay, so you substitute 5 inside the function g. And then what the result you get from that, which is 3, you replace that into the function f. And you've got your answer. Okay, so there's a very simple question there. We could find the composite function f g of x first and then substitute 5 into that, but that would be a lot more complicated. So it's much easier for us to do this way. We could have replaced the x here with 2x minus 7 and the x here with 2x minus 7, find the composite function, substitute 5 into there, and you would get the same answer. But this is way easier to do it this way. So that's 2a completed. Then it says part b, find f minus to the power of minus one. What does that mean? It means find the inverse function for function f. Now, when you're finding the inverse function for function f, you're finding what undoes the function. So basically, one of the methods we could use when you've got something algebraic like this would be easy for us to do, is to rearrange it so the x becomes the subject of the formula. Okay, so what we can do to make it life easy for us. So first, I'll write, I'll write this, I'll call it y equals. Instead of f of x, I'll call it y. So I'll have y equals 5 minus x over 3x plus 2. So when you're finding the inverse, what you're actually doing is you are sw swapping around the x and y axes. That's what actually what's happening when you're finding the inverse function. So what we can do here is we can swap around the x and the y. So instead of y, I'll call it x. Instead of x, I'll call it y. It's like you're making the x-axis into the y-axis and the y-axis into the x-axis. And then when you rearrange this to make y the subject, you will get the inverse function. Okay, so here we're going to have, if we um, get rid of the fraction first, we have x times 3y plus 2 equals 5, take away y. So this is 3xy plus 2x equals 5, take away y. Why am I doing this? I'm trying to make y the subject. So I have to bring the y's together on one side of the equation so I can then make y the subject, right? So that's why I'm expanding this. Now the y's are free to move and I can bring them on the same side. It's easier to bring them on this side or make things neater. So 3xy, add y to both sides and take away 2x from both sides. Now I wanna make y the subject. There's two y terms here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take y as a common factor. So I have y times 3x plus 1 equals 5 minus 2x. And then I can divide both sides by 3x plus 1. So y equals 5 minus 2x over 3x plus 1. Now, what we have to be careful about in these type of questions is, uh, you know, the answer. We should write the domain of the answer. Now, the domain of the answer for finding the inverse function, the domain of the inverse function depends on what the domain of the original function was. If the domain of the original function had some limits to it, 
it was only valid for certain uh, you know x values or was given for certain x values in the domain of the original function of course that will affect the inverse in this case the domain of the original function is all real numbers for x except for the value of x that, that's undefined for so therefore the domain of the inverse function will be also all real values of x except for the value of x for which this is undefined for okay and you can see that in this case 3x plus 1 cannot equal 0 the denominator can never be 0 in which case you have 3x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 1 third so x can't be negative 1 third basically so we can say that x is an element of all the real numbers but x cannot be equal to negative 1 third okay that is the domain of this function you should always write the domain of the function down uh, when you're fi finding the inverse of it okay and so there's the answer to um, this question all right now we could have as just to to see how they're related we could have worked out the range of this function okay by looking at the coefficients of the x so if this is like minus x plus 5 and this is 3x plus 2 in the denominator if you divide the coefficients of the x you get like because this is an improper fraction you'll get like the whole number term so this is going to be minus one third and then you're going to have plus something over 3x plus 2 the remainder will be there which we haven't worked out but don't need to work it out i'm just giving you the idea that this here is basically for this function it will have an asymptote at x equals minus two thirds which will be there and the other asymptote will be x equals minus one third okay uh, sorry y equals minus one third that's the asymptote of this function okay so basically the domain of the the range of this function is all real values of x except for this this value of minus one third and the the range of a function is the same as the domain of its inverse it's just a little side point to make you realize that the domain of the inverse is the same exact thing as the range of the original function okay so that's just a little side point to make you understand certain important things there but it's not really needed in this in this particular question all right so there's part b done now we're going to go on to part c so there's the answer to part b function and what it's undefined for the domain all real values except for that number which it can't be defined for now question part c two part c so solve the equation f 1 over a equals g a plus 3 and there are the functions f and g basically we got to find first what we'll do is i'll first find what f 1 over a is okay that means you replace the x in function f with whatever's in the bracket so the x must be replaced with 1 over a so i have 5 take away 1 over a divided by 3 times 1 over a which is 3 over a plus 2. so let's work out what this is i'll make this into one fraction this is going to be over a so that's going to be 5a minus 1 divided by a all over and if i make this into one fraction i'll have this will be 3 plus 2a over a okay and you can see the a's will cancel out basically what you're going to have is this you're going to have 5a minus 1 over a divided by 3 plus 2a over a which is 5a minus 1 over a times a over 3 plus 2a the a's cancel out so we're left with f of 1 over a is the same as 5a minus 1 over 3 plus 2a we've got to also find what g a plus 3 is so g of a plus 3 now that means we've got to replace the x in function g with a plus 3 so it'll be 2 times in brackets a plus 3 and then minus 7 this is 2 times in brackets a plus 3 minus 7 2x minus 7 so that's going to give you 2 times a plus 6 minus 7 which is 2a minus 1 so g of a plus 3 is equal to 2a take away 1 so we want to solve the equation where f of 1 over a is equal to g a plus 3 so we're going to then make these two equal to each other so you have 5a minus 1 5a minus 1 over 3 plus 2a is equal to 2a minus 1 so now to solve this equation for a 
I'm going to cross multiply. I'll multiply both sides by 3a, 3 plus 2a. So I've got 5a minus 1 equals, and I've got 2a minus 1 times, I'll write this like this, 2a plus 3 is a bit easier to deal with. So you've got 5a minus 1. Looks like we're going to get quadratic here. It's going to be 4a squared. You're going to have plus 6a minus 2a, which is plus 4a. 4a squared plus 6a minus 2a, that's right, minus 3. Okay, so let's bring everything onto one side. So I'll have 4a squared. I'll have 4a, take away 5a, which is minus a, and minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2. So this is the equation that we have to solve. Okay, you've got 4a squared minus a minus 2 equals 0. Can this factorize? Two numbers multiply to give you negative 8, and they add to give you negative 1. It doesn't look like it. 4 and 2 and 8 and 1. No, there's no way to factorize this. So we can use the quadratic formula here. Okay, or we can complete the square. Let's complete the square just to keep that in practice. So to complete the square, what I would do here is first I'll say 4a squared minus a equals 2. Divide both sides by 4 because I want to have a 1a squared here. So I have a squared minus, this is going to be a quarter a equals a half, dividing everything by 4. Now I can complete the square by writing a square bracket. I have a minus a half of a quarter is 1 over 8 squared minus, I've got to take away the square of this, which is 1 over 64, and that's equal to a half. So let me continue over here. So I have now um, a minus 1 over 8 squared is equal to a half plus 1 over 64. A half plus 1 over 64, 64, sorry. Um, so that's going to give me a minus an eighth squared equals a half is like 32 over 64, so that's 33 over 64. So a minus 1 over 8 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 33 over 8. So you have a equals 1, it's going to be 1 over 8 plus, so it's going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 over 8. And there's the answer for this question. Is there any restrictions on a? It says solve the equation. There doesn't seem to be any restrictions in A, so there's the answer. That's the answer to the question. You can leave it in this form, and that's perfectly fine. That's the exact form. It doesn't say uh, find the exact value of. You can you've round it to 3SF. If you do either, I'm sure that will be fine um, if you leave your answer like this. Um, and that concludes this answer. If you wanted to use a quadratic formula here, you could quite easily do so. So using the quadratic formula, have minus B. That's going to be minus... Uh, it's going to be 1, basically, because minus, minus 1, plus or minus, so let's do the plus first, plus the square root of b squared. b squared here is going to be um, minus 1, so it'll be 1, minus 4 times a, 4 times 4, times c, c is going to be a minus 2, all over 2a, so 2 times 4, which is 8, and that gives us the an answer 1 plus or minus the root 33 over 8. Okay, 1 plus root 33 over 8. And if you go and change this here to a negative, you'll see you'll end up with 1 minus, of course. Okay, so there's the answer. Using the quadratic formula, as I just did, use the calculator, which you have, you should better, it's always best to show your steps for that. Okay, especially, um, you know, in, in the pure mathematics papers to show your steps for, for these. Uh, this is just a little revision of completing the square. Sometimes it comes in handy. Um, so there's the answer for question number two, part C. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions that you might want to find from this particular paper will be in the playlist, the link for which should be appearing somewhere in this region over here. Other questions dealing with P3 functions uh, should be appearing in the playlist, the link for which should appear in this region here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.